The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, in the days of King Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will govern my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. When they had heard the king, they went their way, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them. It came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy, and going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise this morning the liturgy has a lot to teach us. New kind of languages, we could call them. In Isaiah, we learn the language of light. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And this image of darkness and light pervades the scriptures, particularly the prophets, looking forward, not just to a star, but to divine light symbolized indeed by the star and by various kinds of brightness, radiance, shining on Israel and preparing for the light who is the word of God. God is light. And so we must learn the language of light, that no matter how deep the darkness there is always light in God. God is everywhere, even in the darkness. Even in the darkness, we can be aware of light, longing for more light. And so we have to see our lives as walking towards the light, walking in the light, and sharing light which means that we should be, generally speaking, positive about life because the light is not overcome 
and cannot be overcome by the darkness. But what we are focusing on today is when the light shines on these wise men from the East. And the story of the wise men is one of the most popular stories uh, in the scriptures. And one of the scenes and incidents most painted in uh, sacred art. And uh, looking at the lives of these wise men and this dramatic incident, we learn another language. And it's a language of horizon. We start with Jesus, Mary and Joseph. The core, the nuclear group. And then around them is the, are the angels. And around them are the shepherds, and today these wise men. So that the horizons are continually expanding. And that is, in a sense, the meaning of this feast. That it's a manifestation to the whole world of the glory of God, of the light that has come among us. And so we learn inclusivity, to include everybody in our prayer, in our life, in our vision. We have a, an infinite horizon. And so no matter how narrow we may feel at times, or how excluded we may feel from certain things, nevertheless, there is a level and a degree at which we are completely embraced by the glory of God and the destiny which is God. And the third language we should learn today is the language of humility. It's very interesting in the paintings and presentations of the wise men, usually one of them is on his knees. The other two usually are standing. Of course, we have no idea <laughs> how many wise men there were, but because Isaiah had prophesied about gold and frankincense and myrrh, we've stuck with three. But in earlier times, uh, there were 12 wise men, <laughs> so on. Like, Stations of the Cross, these things grow in imagination. But I've never seen a picture or a scenario of the wise men prostrate. But that's what the scriptures say. They fell down prostrate before him. The humility of these wise men, maybe kings, uh, teach us our attitude before this astounding mystery of God with us, God in this child. And so today we learn beautiful languages of light, of vision, horizon, and of humility. And we pray that as we approach the crib in our prayer, we too will fall on our knees with joy and gladness for the goodness of God, giving us his only Son. Amen.